Hi, I'm Roger, a Gadget Guy. This is the third in my series of videos about home theater remote controls. And today I'm going to talk about programmable universal remote controls. There are three ways to be able to use a single remote control to control your whole home theater system. The first is to use CEC. This video explains how to use CEC and it lets you use remotes that you already have, but only if all your equipment supports it. This video shows you how to use the remotes that come with your cable box or video streamer. This is most helpful if you don't use other video sources like a Blu-ray player or the internal apps on a smart TV, which typically can't be controlled by a cable box remote. I've included links to those videos in the description. Today we're going to be talking about a third way, and that is to use a universal remote control. And there are three basic types of universal remote control. The first kind of universal remote is the simplest, and it contains a large library of remote codes built into it. And you select the right code by looking up the brand of your TV on a list like this and entering the four digit code associated with that brand. The second type of universal remote also has a large library of built in codes. The difference is if your brand isn't on this list of codes, and many of them aren't, because even this remote isn't big enough to hold them all, then you can teach this universal remote the codes from your equipment using the remote from your original equipment. You point them at each other, you push the buttons on the original remote, and the universal remote will remember them and be able to control your equipment. The third kind of universal remote is one that is controlled by an app on your smartphone. And I'm not going to be talking any more about those because they're very expensive and the online reviews of them are rather hit and miss. Most consumer electronics remote controls use invisible infrared light pulses to send codes to the equipment. It's like sending Morse code signals with a flashlight. Any remote that can be programmed to send the right codes can operate any TV. To program this remote, you look up TVs and you find the brand. In this case, it's LG. There are actually seven codes for LG. And what you do is you try them one at a time in sequence. So the first one on the list is 6021. And you go set up, you push and hold until the power light comes on. And then you push TV. And then you push 6021. The red light went off, which means it took the code. So now we get to try this. So to see if the programming's right, you point the remote at the TV, push the power button, and it turns off, which means it took the programming, it's all correct. Now we get to repeat the same for the Roku streamer box and for the receiver. These simple remotes are great. If you've lost the remote for one of your pieces of equipment or it's broken, and they're also useful for controlling other video sources like Blu-ray players, VCRs, for controlling the internal apps on a smart TV, they work great. The basic universal remote control does have some limitations. It doesn't have codes for every piece of equipment that's ever been made. So if your brand isn't listed, you're out of luck. It also won't control most accessories like switches or audio adapters. The solution, is to use a learning remote like this one. To program this remote, first we'll program the TV control. And the TV is a Sony, and there is a code for Sony. So we can use the direct code entry method like we did with the other remote. And to do that, we hold down the TV button and put in the code for Sony, which is one, zero, eight, one, zero. Red light goes on to confirm the programming, and this should work. I test the programming for the TV by pushing the power button, and it turns on the TV, which shows it has the right code. I have the TV connected to a Chromecast with CEC turned on, so that the remote's programming for the TV will also operate the Chromecast through the HDMI cable from the TV. 
You can't directly control the Chromecast with this infrared remote because the Chromecast and Fire TV use incompatible Bluetooth remotes. If your TV has CEC, and most of them do, the universal remote works fine. Otherwise, I'd recommend the Roku Express streamer, which always works great with universal remotes. I switch the inputs on the TV and check that the Blu-ray player works. I push play, the disc plays, everything's working great. Now I'm going to program this remote for my Peachtree amplifier. Now Peachtree is a very small brand and this remote didn't come with a code for it. So I'm going to have to use the original remote that came with the amplifier. And first I have to put the remote into learning mode. And the way I do that is I push the button for audio and then I push record and hold it down. When the light comes on, I release both keys. Now I can go through and each key in turn. So first with the power key, and then I push that. It blinks to show that it got the programming. Next, the mute key, I blink, and then uh, volume up, blink, volume down. And then repeat for all the input keys in sequence. To exit from the learning mode, you just push the sleep button. Now let's just test the programming of the remote for the audio. We power it on. The power's on. We can push the mute. And we can change inputs and change it back. It's all working perfectly. There's a trick you can do to make the learning remote simpler to use. When you teach the remote a command from another remote, it only changes the buttons you specifically program. If, for example, you have entered the code for the Sony TV and then teach it a different mute command, all the input and navigation commands stay the same to control the TV. It's only the mute command that changes. To avoid having to push the audio key every time before changing volume, you can teach the remote just the volume and mute commands of the audio when it's in TV mode. In the same way, you can teach the remote the commands for a CD player when it's in audio mode after you have programmed the audio for a receiver. This way, you never have to switch modes while watching TV. You use the TV mode only for watching TV and the audio mode only for listening to music. You can use a learning remote on an audio system that never had a remote control, like this mini amplifier or this vintage receiver. Use an optical to audio adapter with a remote volume control like this one. You can then use the remote that comes with the adapter to train the learning remote. I show you how to set up this kind of adapter in more detail in this video. Universal learning remotes can be quite time consuming to set up, but they're not expensive. And once they're set up, they can control virtually any system. If you like this video and found it helpful, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to put a link in the description of the equipment that I've shown you today. If you buy through those links, it won't cost you any more, but it will help to support the channel. That's all I had for today. Thanks for watching.